Um, if he gets any type of Kobe footwork, you know, he's going to be very dangerous. Learning from Kobe, he could be a complete monster. This is Danny Green, and you are listening to Inside the Green Room with myself and my co-host Harrison Sanford. Throughout the podcast, you'll hear about our life experiences from wins, NBA titles, NCAA championships, to the losses, being sent to the G League, overseas, and everything in between. Stay tuned. Thank you guys for coming tonight. It's uh, been a long journey for Danny and I. Danny's journey a bit longer than others, as he'll probably tell you here shortly. It's been a, quite a day for him. Uh, and we'll get to that in a moment. Danny, how you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm good. Mike's working good. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling good. I'm here. We're, we made it. Yeah. So, well, welcome to Inside the Green Room, our first live recording here in Halifax. First live recording ever. Um, it's exciting for us to do this here at the Canadian Museum of Immigration, considering your positioning as coming into Canada. Uh, what happened today, though? Oh, today? Yeah, today. It was interesting. Well, everybody I've talked to in Toronto, they have either family or, or people they know from here, or they went to school here. It's crazy. I never heard of it, but I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot about it since I've mentioned it or since people know I was coming here. But um, I get off the plane, and I, some, I got the middle seat I don't know, in between... <laughs> A couple. Wait, how'd that happen? I don't know, D- man. Did you not ask the people beside you to no, switch seats? No, so I got there. I was kind of late. I was running from workout, so I was kind of late. I checked the seat, and I was like, maybe I'll go to the counter and ask. But by that time, they were already boarding. So uh, when I was there in, in the plane, I was seeing if I could get a – Yeah. It wasn't full flight. It was a full flight, though, like, yeah. like unfortunately. But you play for the Raptors, though. You should not Yeah, I don't think that seat. matters. <laughs> so I was asking a lady, and she was like, did you forget your headphones? Because she told me – listen to a video and I'm like yeah I did I left it up top but I don't think this guy next to me is gonna let me out again <laughs> because uh and she was like he will I'm like do, do you know him she was like yeah it's like, I think it's her husband she was like I'm like okay do y'all want to sit together she's like no I, I like the window <laughs> and he's like I, I need he's like I need the aisle she likes the window I'm like that's cool all right so I'll, I'll just sit in the middle but um you know, I took a little nap I got off the plane I went to use the bathroom yeah. And I have my podcast stuff with me, just, you know, I bring with me. Oh, I never, yeah, I never I knew know. if I needed it or not. Yeah. And I put it on top of the, I guess, right above the urinal or whatever. I forgot. I washed my hands and walked 30 steps to come out. But I don't know how it is, if you guys know how it is in America. Like, like we don't have the exit where you walk open through the doors and, like, the little screening. Went, so I walked out of that and I walked through the exit. You can't go back. So I'm like, oh, I left my bag upstairs in the bathroom. I tried to run back and run back through the doors. But as soon as you walk, they're like, stop, turn around, like some <laughs> robot. <laughs> guy talks to you he's like please stop turn around and it's like the big scene and everybody's looking at me and i'm telling people let me out but they're like no we can't let you out it won't let us in so they had to i had to walk out but it took forever i still don't have my bag yeah you left but, the podcast um, equipment in just the to go back the to the airport. bathroom to get the bag i couldn't get it so we walked around we walked back down again and tried to get somebody to get the bag we're, like, we're running late man we have to hurry up so we just left the bag anyway but uh-huh. i've never seen that before it was a crazy process just to get my i left it in the bathroom okay, well, Security is tight here. It's like 30 steps away. <laughs> yeah. I think it back. Yeah, well, security is tight. The G7 summit is here as well. So you're not the only imp- important person in hopefully, town. Yeah, hopefully better on the way back. Though. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we won't get a middle seat. And a, so I'll have my back there, hopefully. <laughs> Do you have a middle seat for the flight back? I don't know. I haven't checked that. Yeah, Gabe, you got to work yeah, on I'll that. Where's Gabe? Okay. All right, yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, the last episode, if you guys haven't heard our episodes before, they usually come out well bi-weekly, but this is... We're coming back fairly quickly for this live episode. Last episode, though, mm-hmm. when Bria Hartley was on, yeah. she talked about her experiences playing overseas. Yeah. And you said when you were younger, you didn't even leave the country. Could not you, much. No, not much. Did you ever envision yourself when no. you were younger um, playing basketball in Canada? Well, no, actually, no. Um, I think I'd be playing in the NBA, be outside the country, you don't really realize that you think, just, as a kid, you think all NBA teams are in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, as you get older, you realize every time you come here, you have to go through customs and the whole process, and you see them go through it every time, you're like, that sucks. But um, <laughs> it is a fun city. Everybody comes to Toronto, Canada, they love it, regardless of where it is in Canada. You know, people are a lot nicer. I'm from New York, so you understand where I'm you're coming n- from. You're not nice. People aren't as, as nice, but people are a lot nicer, and the city has great energy, so... Every time you come here, I'd love to visit, but just going through customs was 
real pain. And, you know. Well, you know what? What we're gonna do, or hopefully try and do, is get you a Canadian citizenship. We're working on that. Oh, we yeah. have a little quiz at the end of tonight's little live taping. Would that help me get through customs I, well, and everything? So we'll see if we could pull some strings. There's some powerful faster? people in town. Maybe we could talk to them. Do I still get to keep my Texas insurance and taxes <laughs> and your ta- in Texas? I, I don't know about all that. Because the I don't taxes know about here are unbelievable. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that, okay. my friend. Uh, we're going to try and do that. We're also going to talk about uh, Kawhi Leonard working out with Kobe Bryant. Shocker. Shocker. Yeah. Kawhi. <laughs> I thought I would get away one day without talking about So have you talked to guy. Kawhi recently? How's Kawhi doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd get away with at least a day not talking about the guy. But uh, it doesn't happen. But soon enough, he'll be, he'll be in front of the media yeah. and he'll be speaking. So then yeah. I'm not talk for him anymore. We'll, we'll, I was really no, you'll still about, be talking for him yeah, for sure. I was sure. really thinking about telling the press like something crazy, yeah. you know, just to see if they would take and run with it. Like they might. Kawhi says he hates ice cream. You know, just, <laughs> see, they make it big news. You know what I'm saying? They make everything big news. Masai you Jerry Bands ice cream in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. What per he does. Danny Green report. <laughs> yeah, they talk to me like I know his everyday move. I, I don't know what he does every day. We don't talk every day. So I have no, but we can talk about. We'll, we'll know, talk about it for sure. Actually, a little bit. I meant to ask Phil, Phil Handy, that um, I saw him today. About the he workout. just got back. Yeah, because Phil was the main guy who does workouts with him. He was okay. in the picture. I think he's the one that took the picture, and uh, he's great at what he does. Uh, I love working out with Phil. He's one of the guy that I was with in San Diego. We worked out with Kawhi and him. Mm-hmm. But he's the reason why I went there, and I've been trying to catch him as much as possible because everybody loves to work out with Phil. We'll discuss that more with uh, Michael Grange, who's going to be on our second segment. Michael Grange from Sportsland, who covers the Raptors uh, very well. But you know, with the people here, I want them to know more about you and your story growing up um, and the perseverance that you showed um, to get where you are now. For the, for the kids, okay, I guess. Yes. So the first question I have for you, when did you fall in love with basketball? My, well, my dad was a big basketball fan, so uh, I've watched it since I was age, since I was a baby, basically. He had me at a young age. I probably picked up. He said I picked the ball at two. I don't know if that's true or not, but I probably did. <laughs> he had a little Fisher Price room, but I was playing yeah. in like the little leagues, town leagues at five, and um, you know he was a big Michael Jordan fan, so he watched the Bulls a lot. Then later came you know the Spurs and you know, everybody else throughout the years, like people that came from New York, you know, like Stephon Marbury. We also you know, was a fan of many other players, you know, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, mm-hmm. all the guys that came through Toronto as well. But, you know, um, said Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, and then obviously LeBron came later with Shaquille O'Neal in his, his, his heyday. So uh, I've always been a Gary Payton. You talked about yeah, one of your favorite guys. The He's glove. one of my favorite guys too. So yeah. uh, I try to wear his shoes when I can. It's a little different. Out there. It's hard to find them a lot. but Yeah, they're not out know, there. I try to pay homage to those older guys because they're the reason why they, you know, I started to love the game. I watched it at a very young age. My dad was a big fan, so I naturally became a big fan because every kid you know, thinks their dad is Superman. When you're, you know, five years old. So, so everything's going well for you yeah. <clears throat> when you're younger, right? You're one of the best players. For the most part, yeah. When you're younger, you're usually better than everybody. Well, I was taller than everybody else, and I was yeah. bigger than everybody else. So I, I, and then I had to work. My dad, my dad made me work on my game, so I was better than everybody else when I was younger. Yes. When I met Danny in high school, I've known him for since I was 16. So we've known each other for a very long time. Yeah, 15, 16. 15, yeah. 16 years. Yeah. When I met Danny, that's when I realized I shouldn't have played basketball anymore in my life. I should be a journalist. <laughs> Hands were bigger, taller. I was like, all right, I got to do this journalism thing. So I covered Danny a lot in high school. Um, his team was one of the top teams in the country, St. Mary's High School. And then he went to North Carolina. You won a national championship. I was down there with Danny, celebrated a national championship, if you remember that. That yeah, was good times. Crazy. You were down there. Yeah. yeah. Everything was good. You get drafted by the Cavs. Second round, not first round. I'm sure you yeah. want to be first round. So you play 20 games with the Cavs, with LeBron James. You don't get that much playing time, but you're on the team. You're on an NBA roster. Your childhood dreams since you were two yeah, years luckily. old in the backyard with your father watching mm-hmm. games. LeBron leaves. Yeah, you get order. released. The organization changed, yeah. The organization changed. Your yeah. life changed. What was yeah. going through your mind when well, that happened? Well, let's go back to the, we'll go back to the high school. Our, our team was – we got – because my coach was a really great recruiter. Mm-hmm. And even then, when I first got there, I didn't – I didn't always start or just play a lot of minutes. I came in as a sophomore, transferred in. I had to earn my spot. I had to earn my minutes. So I, my junior year, I started looking at me as more of a leader. But we had Mamadou at the time. Mamadou. We had a lot of guys Diallo, there. I remember him. But um, as we got older, our team was good because we had a lot of guys that we groomed from, you know, freshman year, 10th grade, and everybody stayed there. We had a really good team. We were top in the country until we lost in the finals or whatever. Mm-hmm. When I got to Carolina also, I had to earn my spot. So I didn't start until my senior year at Carolina. That's when Marcus Ginyard got hurt. Marcus Ginyard was there. Yeah, he got hurt. and he uh, 
So he took a year. He redshirted that year. And that so who would have known if Vina Bauer ever started at Carolina if wow. he was healthy? So my freshman year, I played pretty good amount of minutes. My sophomore year, barely none. And my junior year, I was like the sixth man coming off the bench. I played a lot of minutes. But senior year, there was no guarantee. It was up in the air. I still, you know, I didn't start to my senior year. Uh, Cleveland had to make the team because you get drafted in the second round. You don't automatically just get a contract. You have to make the team and prove yourself you know, worthy of enough being. I was a cheap contract, so they signed me. They thought I was good enough to stay on the team. But he said, as Braun, after the year, the decision came where Braun was in front of the where were you TV. Sitting, where were you during the decision? I was uh, actually in Cleveland. And I was in the cold tub, I think. We were all, like, just working out summertime. In the cold tub? Y'all watched so the we decision? So, it was a, a rookie and stuff. You have to do summer league. Um, uh, I was getting ready for summer league. We were there. We had the young guys there in the group getting ready for summer league. And uh, we just finished a workout. And everybody's watching the decision in Cleveland, too. We were all <laughs> yeah. cold tub, training room, weight room. Every, every you're, rooting to, you're rooting for him to come back at this point, right? I, LeBron? I, mean, I, I thought. I mean, I don't know. I, what did I know? I was a rookie. So, uh, yeah, I'm watching it. I'm like, hey, he's coming back. We don't worry about it. And, uh that Nick's changed. Announcement. We're just looking like, is that it? Like we thought he was joking. Like, <laughs> all right. So I guess he's gone. And then you know, we did summer league. I had to you're the get, captain now. Yeah, I had to get injured. We had a lot of older guys there still. We I, I did summer league. Happened to get injured, bad ankles, injuries, or something like that. And then um, earlier preseason, they had another kid that was playing well. So I was waived. I was cut. Huh. Um, had to figure it out. Got a couple workouts in San Antonio. I worked out with them twice. They signed me for like four days. And I ended up getting waived again because they wanted somebody that knew the system already to give mm. Manu a break for minutes or something like that. And Ime, actually Ime Odoka, who is one of the assistant coaches now, yep. was I was he's in my workout. So we worked out together and they, they signed me first and then they cut me and they signed him because he had been there before and, and knew the system better. But um, how, how did that feel? Like you get released, you have a chance. It was tough. And all of a sudden they're like, nah, but you know this guy who has another system. Because when you get cut once or you get cut twice and now people think like something's really wrong with you. Like oh, he's damage something's something's wrong is a head case damage good something where teams cut them twice so not many people are calling your phone or, or looking out to to bring you on board so um you know mentally it was it was a little tough but i kept you know working out. i was supposed to sign overseas because the lockout was supposed to happen but um i i signed to a team but i didn't want to go so i was at home for a couple months i had to wait for a letter of clearance just to play in the d league i went now it's the g league but i was waiting for a letter of clearance to play in the d league and um it was the first time in some years that I had been home for Christmas and Thanksgiving, mm. you know. But I was working out. I was watching my teammates from Carolina play on TV. And what, what, were the, well. what were your, like, family members saying to you? Like, they're seeing you. Like, you're sleeping in your – are you sleeping in your same uh, house I was in my grandma's in? house. I stayed away from okay. everybody. They, you know, I still been working out, but at the same time, I was, my hours are weird when I sleep. And it was even worse then. And they thought I was depressed because I was just sleeping, like, all day and being up all night. It was weird. So they thought I was in a depressed mode, which – I wasn't depressed, but at the same time, I wasn't a great move. What was what was moving you? To, were you still working out regularly? Oh yeah, or? for sure. I knew my opportun- I knew opportunity would come, regardless of if if it didn't. I was gonna go out knowing that go I out gave shooting. everything. Yeah, I know I gave everything you know I had to the game before I you know retired or hung it up. But um, kept working out. Finally, got a letter of clearance to play in the D League. I was happy just to be playing again because I was sitting at home for a minute. Um, ended up in Reno. I was like, oh, Reno, Nevada. That's cool. I don't know if you guys know Reno much. Um, it's in Nevada. And it's not <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> it's, a, it's the total opposite of Las Vegas. So I thought at that time I was young. I was stupid. I'm not great at geography. So I'm like, oh, it can't be too far from Vegas. It's, it's, the op- it's literally the opposite yeah. side of the state. And but you weren't cold. making too much money to be gambling anyway no, in Vegas, right? But so even then, Vegas is a fun city. Be no, I'm not, I'm not a gambler anyway, yeah, but Vegas okay. is a fun city. It's warm. It's cold there. It's in the mountains. It's, it's not great. They have casinos. <laughs> but but you were putting up numbers in Reno. Yeah, um, we had a good team. We actually had a lot of guys there randomly that had made their own pathways. Jeremy Lin was up and down at the time. Steve Novak was there. He was up. He was there for like two days and left. We had a uh, Salim Stoudemire was there. Who else was with us? That, that Donald Sloan. Jeremy Lin was there. Oh, he left right before you. At the he was there. No, I left before Jeremy. He was up and down. He was assigned from I think Sacramento or Golden State. So he originally, I think, was drafted by Golden State or picked up by Golden State because in summer league, I don't think he was drafted. He mm-hmm. did well. He played with Dallas. I think Golden State picked him up, and he was assigned down back and forth. So he was that that time it was only like ten D league teams, and our affiliate was we were connected to three NBA teams or something like that. Sacramento and Golden State were two of them. So so what, he was on assignment back and forth. What's what's in your mindset, right? You're this McDonald's All American, top one of the top players in the country. You get to North Carolina. You play with LeBron James. You're living the basketball dream. 
And you're in now. You're in Reno, and what you were giving yourself? Yeah, I have to walk baths? to the gas station to get my own ice. Um, <laughs> figuring out how to find sneakers, tights, do my own laundry. It's crazy. Didn't have my car there at the time. Um, taking two or three flights in the cold, and it was a very humbling experience. But it, it was great though. So Phil Handy was actually there with me too. That's how me the first time I met Phil because he was from the Bay Area and he was coming down just to work out before he actually I think he got on with another roster of coaching. But um, so what's pushing what's pushing you at this point? Is it just like you don't want to be a failure? Is it you just love the game of basketball so above, much? All the above, for sure. But um, at the time, I knew it said once again, I knew my opportunity would come. Now I'm in the D League. Now I have an opportunity to prove myself and to show cause that's the fastest route to the NBA. Now it's the G League. So I was there. I knew if I did well enough, I would get an opportunity. Some people always people always get hurt in the season. Teams always sign guys in the season just for the playoffs. So if I knew if I did what I was supposed to do, I would either get signed for playoffs or get called up. Luckily enough, I did. So I played well enough. My coach liked me, which was help. Uh, Eric Musselman, he was awesome. Mm-hmm. He's a little guy, but he's he's feisty. I mean, he cuts out a lot of reps, ready to fight players. He was amazing. But he oh, yeah. Did he try guy. to fight you any time? No, not me. Okay. Really, thank God. But uh, Who other, you other players, the other okay. players on the other team and other coaches. <laughs> but it was fun, man. It was interesting. But he was great. And he had my back, and he you know allowed me to play my game and, and kind of feature me there. So played well and – Sure enough, I got a call. Well, I had to call Pop. I left a voicemail. Oh, you called Pop? I called Pop. So my agent gave me the idea, like, you know, you might want to give him a call, see if he can give you another chance. Da, da, da. So I called him, left a voicemail. I guess a week or two later, they, they called me back and was like, yo, ready to get back into the show? And I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm in Reno. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was at home for two months. I'm trying to get out of Reno. And it wasn't fun. And I'm, you know, taking through the, do my own ice baths. Cooking my own breakfast and everything and finding my own You know, clothes. it's not that bad cooking your own breakfast, Danny. It's not I mean, that bad. It's not it's that bad. Crazy. But it, <laughs> it was just a process, man. And overseas was very similar to that, too, like yeah. as well. So just we'll to catch to up everybody who's listening, yeah, so you go to the Spurs, then the yeah. lockout happens, so you finally make some headway. Yeah, they call me back. He's ready to go to the show. I was like, hell yeah. So I went, you get there. get the call, and they're like, you're back with San Antonio. Yeah, you get and to it's, San- end of the, it's the end of the year, so we only have like 10 games in the season. Mm-hmm. Well, I played a little bit because they're resting old guys, which is great for me. But then we had the uh, playoffs, and we were one seed. I think Manu had dislocated his elbow or something. He pretty much played with a cast on in the playoffs. We played Memphis that year. Um, they were eight seed. I think it was one of the very few times the eight seed beat the one seed. Yep, I remember and that. We lost, so we we're out of playoffs. Fairly Real early. early, right when you're Fairly. getting right when you're getting your chance again to get yeah, to exactly. get known. And then the lockout happens, and then they're like, "You got to figure it out." So I go overseas to Slovenia. I don't even know what the hell that was. <laughs> I I know that was a country. I didn't know what it, somebody said it to me. I was like, "Are you speaking English?" He's like, "You going to Slovenia?" I'm like, "What? What? I'm going where? What is? I don't know what that is. <laughs> is that a place?" I'm like, "Is that like a?" And he was like, "Yeah, it's a country." But like, but at that and at that, <laughs> <laughs> but at that point, you're trying to maximize your earning potential financially For because sure. you haven't been able to get NBA sure. reps, so well, you have to go right all around. Obviously. You want to make some money, but I also want to stay in shape. I want to keep playing, and I want to, you know, stay relevant, and so that you know teams didn't forget about me. So you know, when you're just in some time working out, and you have to come back and make the team again, they didn't see you haven't done much, or they don't know people can't follow you. So if it didn't work out with San Antonio, people say, "Oh, I seen him play in Slovenia or overseas. He looks like he's ready. We could use him. He can show some things, and other teams may be interested." So it was a win-win for me going over there, but it was another humbling experience. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then you ate, you finally blew up. That next year the Spurs get you, you go through the NBA. Finals Luckily, but yeah, Slovenia said so we're there for four months. You practice twice a day every day. Mm-hmm. Um, Luckily, they spoke English there. You might not be getting. We weren't getting paid. I think I paid the first month, and after that, three months we weren't getting paid. I heard. Yeah, I heard they like hold back paychecks in depending Slovenia. If like, you don't win, the owner doesn't want to pay. Paid, depending on the economy and sponsors. So if the sponsors are not paying on time, or if the economy is not great, you're not going to get paid. You're still practicing twice a day. I'm like, I'm not getting paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not practicing twice a day anymore. Like y'all not yeah. paying me to practice twice a day. I'm, I'll practice once a day. But <laughs> so, but if I, eventually you leave, they pay you. But I had to come back and make the team again in San Antonio. I was like the 15th man on the bench at that point, and they had just they, they drafted Corey and Kawhi that summer before the lockout happened. And eventually, you end up scoring all those threes in the finals. We got to no, go. So what happened was Manu got hurt again. So this is when Manu. Oh, okay. Was, Manu was he's, he's getting a little older, even though it seemed like he's been playing forever. Even after that point, he still played like another seven years, eight years. Um, so they started figuring out we had to come off the come off the bench and well, limit his minutes because I think he pulled a hamstring or he broke his hand. He broke his hand at this point. It was like four games into the season. As me and Corey Joseph ended the bench. Y'all know Corey well because he's a Canadian guy. 
And um, he was a Raptor, so yeah. <laughs> but me and Corey ended the bench. And I'm like, yo, just stay ready. You never, it's gonna happen. You know, so people get hurt every. It's 82 games. A lot of guys get hurt. Your number's gonna be called. Next, you know, when Samano gets hurt four games into the season, he broke his hand. He's out four to six weeks, and they're trying to figure out who is gonna fill that those shoes or fill that void. We need another starting point guard or two guard, or we need somebody back. Um, they had James Anderson at the time, and they had somebody else. But um, I was still at the end of the bench, and I think this is back when I said Steph and Monte were together in Golden State. Mm -hmm. So Monte, uh, Monte is very good. Monte Ellis, for those who don't know, what I'm talking about, he's really good. He was better than Steph at the time. Steph wasn't Steph yet. He still had the ankle injuries and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So he still had like 20 at halftime. And he had an ankle injury. So he wasn't coming back the second half, thank God. Uh, Monte had probably like 20, 25 also at halftime. Mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out who can stop, like who we're going to get to stop this guy, you know, from scoring. He had like 33 going into like the fourth. He's, on his, road, he's on his road to like yeah. going to 50. 45. And you're licking your chops. And they're like, you know what? You know, Pop is known for to just throwing somebody in there, usually in a game where it's not that close or that matters that much. Just to see how you're going to react. He'll just call your name. And you'll be like, oh, me? You sure? Like, I just got here. Like, guys, he'll sign. He'll just throw him in the game. And I'm like, he's like, Danny. And I'm like, looking around. <laughs> There's another Danny on the bench. I'm like, I'm, this is a close game. It's Golden State. I just got, I'm the 15th man. Let's go. Get in there. And I'm like, to do what? What do you want me to do? So he goes in there. He goes, you're going to guard Monte Ellis. I said, what? <laughs> I'm just sitting on the bench for th three quarters. I'm dead cold. This guy's got 33. What do you what, what do you expect me to do with this guy? <laughs> he's fast as hell. Yeah, he's really fast. Well, he gets the business, yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'll do the best I can. He goes, you're going to 21 him. I don't, I don't know what that, what that means. But we have this theory. We're going to do this on him. It's a certain way we're going to guard him. He said, this is all you have to do. He said, do this, do this, and this. Try not to let him catch the ball. Said, all right. <laughs> I'll try my best. I mean, he caught the ball, obviously, multiple times. He <laughs> yeah. did not, Sounds did not right. catch the ball. But um, I played pretty good defense on him. I stopped him a couple times. I made him shoot some tough shots, and we ended up winning the game. So from there, you know, I went from playing like you know two to two minutes, five minutes a game, playing you know ten minutes a game. Because like, all right, play a little defense. And I started picking up people full court. Started picking up like Ricky Rubio full court because I know I wasn't playing a lot of minutes. Yeah, so you might as well. So go I'm out a lot. there. I'm just going to chase guys and show that I'm, I'm there. So they liked the way that I played defense. They didn't care about three pointers. So we went from playing ten minutes to fifteen minutes, and then from there. Got opportunity to play a little offense. Even though I did shoot and make threes, they didn't run plays for me. And even when I left, they still didn't run plays for me. <laughs> <laughs> he, never, he didn't run plays for me. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, Danny scores when he gets the ball if he's open. But other than that, we're not running plays. He's a defensive guy. That, that's his pop. So, But from that, that's how you know, it all, all rode itself. It just went from being the last guy on the bench with Corey, from Mono being hurt, to be like, oh, halfway through the season. They're like, oh. He's like, you're going to start this game. I'm looking. I'm like, what are you talking? Like, it's the middle of the season. And um, I think I went 0 for 8 that game as well. Didn't hit a basket. And then he's like, next game, I was actually going home to New York. He goes, don't worry about it. Just keep playing your game. You're fine. You're going to start again. He's like, the number's in your favor because you can't shoot as worse as you did last game. You're going to be all right. You're going to hit at least one today. Yeah. So that's, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Good to know. It's yeah. uh, a story of perseverance, always being ready, even when life comes at you in different angles and you have disappointments when your number is called. If you're prepared, even when... You don't think you're going to get called on. Oh, yeah, if you yeah. perform, you can make it on and be a professional basketball For player. For sure. Whatever it is, you, just, you know, keep keep at it. Your opportunity is going to come. I knew that. And, you know, my family, I had a good foundation, a good people, you know, group around me that kept reiterating that to me. Like, yo, just don't worry about it. It's going to come. Take your time. They were very patient and positive. And that helped me stay motivated and helped me be calm and not panic and just think, oh, I have to look at other routes to do something different. But, um, you know, it was good. It luck so luckily, it turned out for me, and it, it does happen. A lot of opportunities are going to come regardless. You just keep working on something, that your opportunity will come, and it, it did. Yeah, it's a story that could apply not just to basketball, but to uh, everybody's life here and listening uh, when this podcast does get released. We will have Michael Grange on in a moment. We're going to take a quick break. Danny, I'll let you say hi to some of the people. For sure, probably going to ask sure. you about Kawhi in the meantime. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Music for Inside the Green Room is provided on behalf of The Cut Buddy, the number one best-selling beard and haircut tool as seen in GQ, Forbes, and on Shark Tank. Give their website a visit at thecutbuddy.com. Oh, we're back with Inside the Green Room, uh, segment two of our live podcast taping in Halifax, Canada with Danny Green. We're here at the Museum of Imm Canadian Museum of Immigration, and I believe... We have Michael Grange from Sportsnet, uh, a writer, columnist, and a on the line. great reporter uh, okay. about the Toronto Raptors on the line with us. Mike, you here with us, Mike? No? Cool. 
should get on soon, I think. In the meantime. In the meantime. In the meantime. <laughs> there we go. Hi, you reached Mike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're leaving a voicemail. We're leaving In a voicemail. In the meantime, we'll leave Mike uh, a voicemail. Yeah, we're leaving a voicemail. Is that cool? Hey, At the tone, please record your message. <laughs> when you are finished recording, you may hang up Danny, or you press get, you got, I'll, I'll, leave. I can leave. I'll let you finish. Mike, what's up, man? Stan. <laughs> Um, I know we go way back, like four flats on a Cadillac, but we got a group of people here waiting to hear from you. Uh, we're waiting to hear from you. We're doing the pod right now. Harrison, you want to jump in? Go ahead. Mike, uh, just want to hear from you, buddy. I just want to make sure everything's okay. Call twice now. <laughs> call twice now. Or is it three times? <laughs> Third time is a little worrisome. Yeah, so uh, give us a call back. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> There's time. This is the charm. Give me one more shot. Mike's going to strike out. <laughs> Mike, Mike missed out, man. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it exactly? I don't know. know. I don't got my phone over. What's anyway, up? she's gonna call back in our next segment. It's eight. It's eight oh seven. I think oh, we said so we're we gonna told call. Eight oh five, right? We told him eight oh five. Okay, let's keep it rolling. So tonight we're gonna give away a basketball from signed by Danny. Actually, let's just do that right now. All right. So one ball is gonna go away, and if Danny. Gets this citizenship test correct. Test. Test. Okay. We're going to end up giving the other basketball away. If not, then we're going to have to hold on to it. We'll give it away at another time. We'll give it away tonight if he gets three out of the five questions correct. Yeah, and we'll give question. it to somebody here in the audience. So, uh, Danny, you got to be quick with this, but let's go okay. ahead and start the test. Is there an answer on the paper behind me? or to it, Well, let's start Name with this the three one, who have scored more than 50 points. In, a, in franchise history. Ooh. I'm going to go with DeMar. Yes. Vince. Yes. I want to say Tracy McGrady, but I feel like it's somebody else. Uh, the, <laughs> hey, Terrence hey, Ross. You, 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 yes. I'll say, oh, I see what we got here. Yes, I see what we're doing here. Uh, <laughs> I see what we're doing good here. I do remember that. <laughs> like, so check, check my mans out. <laughs> Like 10-3, 12, like 10 threes <laughs> yeah. that game or something like that. I remember that. That's crazy. For the people who end up listening to the podcast, it was Which terrible. one of these are not an NHL Canadian team? I'm definitely getting this wrong. Okay, hold on. Let me, let, me read, let me read the question one more time, Denny. Okay. Which of these are not an NHL Canadian team? The Toronto Maple, Maple Leafs, the Ottawa Senators, uh, Montreal, okay. wait, the Montreal Canadiens, uh-huh. Edmonton Polar Bears, yeah. Winnipeg Jets, and the Vancouver Canucks, you guys, um, don't help my friend here. I'm going to go with the Ottawa Senators. <laughs> Actually, that is a team. <laughs> <laughs> um, polar Bears. <laughs> I knew I was going to get that wrong. Yeah, we got to work on We got some work to do with them, guys. Got some work to do with them. <laughs> I thought there was two of them, though. I was going to guess two teams. I don't know why. All right, here we go. This one is... Switch to music a little bit. Oh, Which yes. of these artists are not Canadian? They're Drake, all Canadian. Justin Bieber. Yeah. The Weeknd. Party Next Door. They're all Canadian. Oh, man. they're all Canadian. Yeah, they're all Canadian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we got two right, one wrong. You need yeah. one more to make sure that one of our fans here get another basketball. Music and basketball. I'm good with that. <laughs> All right. Not so much. Which of the following is a Canadian chain? Oh, God. Starbucks. Ah, I know this one. Tim Hortons. <laughs> Wendy's. Probably one of my favorite places here. Burger King. Tim Hortons. Ah. Yeah. Nice. I get my well citizenship. Done. Welcome to Canada. A, do I get a citizenship <laughs> now? Yeah. <laughs> and now we'll just do this one for fun then, I guess. This is like a bonus. Okay, yeah. I think I get this one right, too. Which of the following is the national sport? of Canada. Hockey, skiing, lacrosse, or basketball? Hockey. No. Skiing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's crazy. <laughs> it is lacrosse. It, it is twice. lacrosse. Now, the question that I had for you, Daddy, uh, you ever been to a hockey game before? I know you've no, played I in cold not, weather cities. I, I mean, hot, warm weather cities. I've been to a hockey cities. game. Um, very much looking forward to seeing one live. I hope there's a fight. But I, I, I have not been to a hockey game. Okay. I think it's going to be a good time for you. You haven't sure. been to a hockey game. You've played at North Carolina. You played in San Antonio. Have you ever actually been to an MLB baseball game? You have that chance to now in Toronto. 
I'm not in San Antonio. I wasn't at a baseball. Yeah, there's game. no baseball team. Yeah, and I'm not MLB in college. I went to see college. But, okay. Uh, but I have been to a baseball game, and I was like a random. I was young though. It was a random camp, basketball camp. They took us to like a Pittsburgh game or something like that. But uh, not as an adult, I have not been to a, a baseball game since in a long time. Okay. Well, you have the opportunity now. Uh, yeah. To do both in sure. Toronto, got to, and yeah, we gotta make sure you know all the Canadian hockey teams yeah. as well. Um, I mean, <laughs> for sure, that yeah, that helps. <laughs> Polar bears, I'll for sure know that they're not a. <laughs> Uh, we have we do have time here for some questions from the audience. Uh, if you can, there is a microphone to my right. And we picked out three people that are going to ask you questions, Danny. Okay. Um, we have one from Mike McMahon. Mike, like the What's hat. What's up, Mike? Mike? The hat is fire. I actually was looking at it before you got up. I was like, yo, I need to get one of those hats. I'm a hat guy. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm, yeah, I like okay. hats. Uh, first off, just welcome to Halifax. This is thank you, this man. Is so Appreciate cool. it. It's amazing. We've had a great warm welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it took me forever to get through, you know, my bag, and then I brought the rain too. So yeah. I hope you get your bag back. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, no. My question now that you're a Raptor, uh, who are you looking forward to playing with the most on the team? Besides Kawhi, yeah, besides I, Kawhi yeah. I played with Kawhi for like seven, eight years, so I played with him quite a bit. Just, it's been a year or two since we've actually played together and, <laughs> but um i'm excited to actually to see him out there again but um probably the most exciting to play with is probably jv Val- valentunas Ooh. Um, why is that because he's a he's a passing big and not too many bigs are great at passing and he likes to pass and if you obviously we all like to score so <laughs> if you and if so if you cut it seems like he'll throw you the ball and he also is the guy that's probably going to set most of the screens for me he's going to probably get me open the most and probably look for me the most if I'm running the floor or cutting through so he seems like a big you know gentle giant nice guy personality wise <laughs> but on the court as a court, as a basketball player he's not a gentle giant he's very physical and he's a bully but uh, something I'm interested in looking forward to seeing how well you know how I, how I play with him Mike thank you for coming to the show tonight yeah, thanks, appreciate Mike. you Appreciate it, man. Nice hat. <laughs> uh, we got two more questions, and then we're going to try and call Michael again. Uh, if he sends us to the voicemail one more time, we got problems. Uh, <laughs> next question is from Ali Raymond. Ali, don't Allie? be shy. Okay. All right, there you go. What's up, Ali? How you doing? Where are you from? Uh, Calgary. Oh. Calgary. You didn't come all the way from Calgary for this. <laughs> Where's that again? Where, what is That's, that? Is that a country? Is that a city too? <laughs> Sorry, it's near the end of polar bears. You have my ignorance, geography wise. A lot of these places I've never heard of in my life. So I actually heard of it, but I just don't know where it's at. Yeah, it's just before Vancouver. It's the west west. Oh, coast okay, of cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. No Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome, to Halifax. Thank Great you. To have you. Um, my question was, um, you know, one of your what's one of your best or funniest stories that we might not know about Manu? You, you Manu? About yeah, Manu. Yeah. Oh, it's it's kind of like a messed up st- <laughs> oh <laughs> i have a story i mean it happened most recent there's a lot of funny stories of mono and, and it's kind of the, very unfortunate for him he's Uh-oh. the butt Uh-oh. of this joke um huh. so i don't know you guys know about much about mono but he's had a couple he's had quite a few injuries throughout his years he's given up quite a much of his body to this to the organization if you guys know the part of the body that i'm talking about about the story about oh, the give up yeah, yeah. It's yeah. quite interesting. So Mono, he's the one known to yes take charges, don't dive on the floor, and you know jump into the stands to save a basketball. Um, you know, Pop's always cussing us out for not taking charges. I, I'm not taking charges. I like to block. <laughs> I like to block shots, so I get away with it because I'll block a shot or two here and there and yeah. get away with it. I'll take a charge. But those big guys rolling down the paint, they have big knees, feet, and bodies that are. You know, <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. Mono, for some reason, he just doesn't care. He's just like, all right throw my body in there he caught a really good knee to an area of his body was not good and he limped off (laughs) he limped off you know after the game his voice was very high pitched (laughs) (laughs) he had a very soft sounding and and, timmy was messing with him timmy to duncan i'm talking at the time i think we all know know he's messing messing with him you know playing what happened man did you lose a you know did you lose a ball or you know (laughs) and uh (laughs) unfortunately (laughs) He actually did. Like he will. He did. 
walked in and did, but he had to get surgery the next day. <laughs> Timmy felt crazy. He felt so bad. Timmy felt so bad, but he had to. <laughs> so part of, you know, his, part of it, not the whole, but part of his body, he had to get surgery on and they had to take off, take out. And uh, he, <laughs> that's, I'd say the organization owns it, but he gave, you know, he gave, he gave balls his balls to gave, the organization. He gave, he gave his career, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy, you know, he, he put his real body on the line. It's a good thing he had three kids at this point already. <laughs> that was my next question, yeah. So, uh, sorry, Mono, I didn't want to tell everybody that, but I, I had to. That's the only thing that came to mind. Well, thank but, you uh, for no thank you for making our podcast yeah, yeah, now man. R-rated for that yeah. question. <laughs> Thanks, Ali. Appreciate it, man. We have one more quick question, and then we're going to try that phone call again. This will be from Sagar Sahata. Sahoda. Sahoda. Sagar Sahoda. That's right. All right. right. Nice. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Cool, okay. Go to school here at Dallas University, just finishing up my degree. Um, Congratulations. Awesome. That's Congratulations. Cool. My uh, question is for Harrison and Danny. Okay. And my question, I got a question? is, how is how has the perception of Canada and the city of Toronto and the Raptors organization changed in the eyes of you and your peers over the years? Go ahead, Harrison. I'll let you answer this first. Wow. I'll go second. I'll piggyback second. Well, as somebody who's been a journalist now for over 10 years, I've been able to talk to a couple players, and they love Toronto. Um, has it? Ch- I don't know how much has changed. Danny, maybe you can speak to more of that. But they've always loved it. I think having known some agents as well, they always appreciate visiting toronto i think danny maybe you could speak to the perception of if they'll ever For sure stay, um, but i think for the most so part i've probably been coming been more often than harrison has uh, i've been doing a camp up in huntsville uh, for the last like 10 plus years it's a camp olympia you know it's been a lot of fun and uh, the kids there are great the people there are great and at first when i got there it was like a getaway because there's no cell service it was just on the lake and it was real you know tranquil it was cool um but as I've seen over the years, the 10 plus years of the last decade or so, um, I think the culture, the energy has changed due to the fact that, you know, you have certain people, big time people come from there and actually make a name for themselves and kind of put Canada on the map like a Drake, The Weeknd, Justin Bieber, Tory Lanez, Party Next Door. Uh, you know, music is a big part of every uh, culture everywhere and, and music kind of changes a, a lot of how a city is and how people interact and stuff like that. So I think the music side of it has, you know, helped Toronto be put on the map and also grow and, you know, the city of Canada in general. But Toronto for sure is known and, and people visit more. But it's always a great city to visit. Even back, I talked to my, my dad's friends when they were visiting back in the, the 80s and 90s. Like, oh, Toronto's booming back then. I can't imagine. I'm like, <laughs> it was the 80s, man. You know, it's, it's a lot better now. It's more updated. It's modern. But it's a great city, but from the time that I've seen it, I can see it grow culturally, especially from the music side of things and, you know, basketball side, obviously getting better. You guys, you know, have had some ups and downs. Every organization has ups and downs where they're really good then they're not so good. Um, I've been lucky. been on teams that have been always good. In San Antonio, it's a rarity where you see a team be good for that long, 20 years. But um, you know, Toronto's had the ups and downs, but you see the culture basketball-wise and music-wise kind of change the city culturally and have it grow and be one of the major cities in the league and in you know, throughout, I guess, the North North America. So. Mike's ready. Cool. We Mike. think Thanks, we man. think so. Thank you. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. All right. So we're going to talk to Michael Grange from Sportsnet. We're going to try to again. We're going to talk about we saved the whole Kobe and Kawhi workout. We're going to talk about Kyle Lowry working out with Chauncey Billups. And then we're going to do a little name association with the Raptors roster. And then uh, I have a question as well that Michael might be able to answer. I don't know. We'll see what your response is to it okay, as well, Okay, yeah, Danny. let's do it. Let's see what we uh, got. Is Mike, on, is Mike on the line? So let's try and call Mike. Try it one more time. Here we go. We're going to give him another shot. We'll see what his excuse is for not picking up the first three times. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Hello. Hello there. Mike, what's up, man? What's up, man? Danny and I called you. We left your we... message, man. Did you get it? <laughs> I have not checked my messages. Yet. Oh man, you're gonna laugh. I, I, was, you playing, I was playing golf today, so I had it on do not disturb. I've got to turn it off. Oh, okay, no worries. You'll you'll listen to it after this, and you'll have a little laugh. Yeah, you have a good laugh. About not a it. not a big laugh, but a little laugh. Yeah. Is it like is it like a mean voicemail? Like, no, like... not at all, man. The people who left the they left the voicemail. They gave you some good love. All right. We were just worried about you. That's all. Already, you know. 
I got I got like tweets like pick up the phone and like, <laughs> there's no patience out there for anybody. What are you doing? You know? Pick up the phone. It's like everybody's perfect. Uh, <laughs> no judgment here, Mike. We we know you're not perfect. We, I'm not perfect. So. <laughs> Actually, you are perfect. No, 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 no. We we can do a podcast about how I'm not perfect, and it would like it would go on for a long time. <laughs> Uh, Mike, we wanted to just talk to you quickly about some Raptors uh, going into this season. Our first question, when you saw Kobe Bryant working out with Kawhi Leonard, how encouraging should that be uh, for Raptors fans? <laughs> um, or or discouraging. Or discouraging, my well-known, yeah. My well-known anti-Kobe Kobe stance. The, um, well, I would say, I, would say um, I, think, I think encouraging because, you know, Kobe – Brian is nothing except, I mean, he's a craftsman and uh, he has a lot of knowledge to share. I think it's very telling when a guy like Kawhi Leonard, who's already, you know, at the peak of his craft, wants to go and try and absorb more knowledge. Yeah. So that's all very positive. Yeah, for sure. Um, the fact that, uh, you know, that Kobe Bryant is also so tightly affiliated with the Lakers, Yeah, I guess would be you know, cause for some uh, some apprehension. Well, but I know the Raptors coaches were there too, and 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 I mean, I think I think you know any of this stuff has to be evaluated in kind of a long way, right? Like, there's no moment uh, in this season where you know that that I'm sure Kawhi Leonard is going to go. I got to get out of here, or I got to stay. It's going to be like little micro developments over time that's going to influence them one way or the other. And the fact that he's healthy and wants to work with Kobe Bryant, I think, will help him have a great season. And the best chance the Raptors have of having Kawhi Leonard stay here is him having a great season, the Raptors having a great season, and him deciding this is a, a place where he can have a future. If Ka- Danny, if Kawhi is healthy, right, yeah. where where can his game actually improve to where being with Kobe makes him yeah. operate at an even higher level than what we've seen him. I mean, Kobe's obviously a rare, it's hard to compare anybody to Kobe. He's the, he was one of the greatest, I think, to ever do it, especially on certain aspects of the game. Um, his footwork was unreal, it was unmatched. His competitiveness is a, another thing as well. Um, obviously, he's a god in this sport. He's one of the legends of, of you know, for everybody. But, um, you know, Kawhi, if he continues to learn from him, I could see... He, Definitely come close. You see where he left off at. He was in MVP race just a year and a half ago or two years ago. Um, you know, he's one of the best two-way players in the game because of how you know great he was defensively before he got good offensively. He was good with his hands, good at blocking shots, getting steals, and that made him you know very efficient and effective on the offensive end because you get you know easy two or three baskets a game just getting steals and getting layups or dunks. Um, but offensively, you know, you got that mid-range game, you got in the post, and, and you know perfected or you know, kind of got his spots down pat to where he knew certain moves, certain shots were automatic. Um, if he gets any type of Kobe footwork, you know, he's going to be very dangerous. But um, I said I'm interested to see to see how his, his explosiveness is going to be coming back, especially with the, the injury. You know, quite it trickled off to his knee a little bit. Um, but I think he'll still be, regardless if he has athleticism or explosiveness or not, he's a very, even though he doesn't seem like it to most people, he's a very high IQ guy a high IQ basketball player and he knows the floor, he knows his angles, and he knows how to play the game, and he knows how to to score and defend without having to use that explosiveness. He can still get places and still, you know, be effective, especially with how big his hands are, how long his arms are defensively, offensively, he knows how to use body well to get, you know, to the free throw line and, and, and you know, get to the basket. So regardless of either way, I think he's gonna be great if he doesn't have his you know his full athleticism back as he was younger or before the injury. But um, said so learning from Kobe, he could be a complete monster. You know, somebody, Michael, somebody who's gotten uh, a lot of slack uh, as a Raptor has been Kyle Lowry uh, because of the Raptors' inability to get all the way to the finals. Um, and it, he, but he's the one main star that stayed. Obviously, Dwayne Casey was let go as head coach. Demar Derozan was traded. And obviously, there was this period that Kyle Lowry had during the summer where he didn't want to talk to the media because him and DeMar DeRozan had developed such a strong friendship. How do you think that impacts him now going into this new team with a new star? And Danny, you could attest to this. Kawhi is probably, you know, not saying anything is wrong with Kawhi, but he's probably not the most 
chatty person. So we know mm. the difficulties that Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan had in becoming friends on the court after a while it happened. How difficult can this period be for Kyle Lowry, Michael? I, I don't think it's going to be all that difficult. I mean, you know, it was, I, I would say it was a blow. They, their relationship, DeMar DeRozan's relationship with Kyle Lowry, Lowry vice versa, was real. Um, it took time to develop, but it developed organically and it was, you know, they truly were friends and, you know, seeing a friend move on, especially one you've had so much success with, um, you don't take that lightly, but, you know, Kyle Lowry has been in this league a long time. He's been traded. He's been on the wrong end of all kinds of decisions. He's had coaches fired. He's arguably (laughs) maybe in some cases, you know, Head coaches want to fire him. You know, he's, he's, he's the epitome of a veteran. And I think I have zero concern about him having any sort of hangover about DeMar DeRozan leaving and that somehow impact, impacting his performance or his, um, role with that team. And as it relates to, you know, will he be develop, able to develop a, a, an on-court symmetry or cohesiveness with Danny or with Kawhi Leonard? I don't think that's going to be an issue because Kyle Lowry wants to win. And, you know, the issues he had, you know, when he first came to Toronto were very much around he didn't want to be here. He was a much more immature person. He would tell you that. And all those things are in the past. That guy, This guy at this point is a pro. He understands what opportunities presented to him. And I think he's going to, you know, do everything he can to execute at the highest level. Doesn't mean he doesn't won't miss his friend. Um, I do think, you know, just from a public, uh, you know, how to carry, you know, how to be the face of a team. Kamar Rosen took a lot of weight and a lot of heat um, in that aspect. He was just such a, you know, Danny knows him, I'm sure. He's just such an easygoing guy. He was very much. Um, uh, and he's, you know, he soaked up a lot of tension in that room and how that is going to ma- manifest itself with a new dynamic, new guys, you know, that, that's, that's maybe a little bit interesting question, but I don't think it's going to be an issue where, where Kyle Lowry is going to somehow have his performance affected. And, you know, the number one currency in the NBA is respect and, you know, Kyle Lowry, I can guarantee you respects Kawhi Leonard, vice versa, and that's always the basis of a great relationship. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think uh, it's hard to to say, but I think even though Kawhi is not chatty, I don't think he has to be because he's going to make the game a lot easier for everybody around him and for, for Kyle. So I think it would be easy for him to adapt and adjust. But I agree. DeMar is one of the most laid-back guys you can meet. He's a really good guy. And the process for him sucked, and I'm you know sad that it was so – Sad for him that it didn't go the way that it, it should have for him, or as smoothly as it should have. But so Kyle's been in his business long enough to understand and know how the, how it works. But um, it's going to be interesting so, um, to see how, how Kyle you know plays this year. I think hopefully is that even better. You know, has a more chip on his shoulder. But um, is, um, I'm looking forward to playing with him, and probably gonna make my my life easier too as a point guard. He's really good as well. Michael, we want to thank you for picking up the phone this time around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be in Toronto shortly. The inside the green room team is obviously Danny will be there. Danny, have you met Michael face to face yet? I don't think so. Mike, have we met before? We have not. Okay. Uh, right. You know what? I did, Danny. You were for your draft working. Oh, <laughs> nine years ago. We uh, we did meet then. Uh, okay. I don't hold it against you if you don't remember me. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And I met a lot of guys, a lot of people nine years ago. They're like, "Yeah, I was here for your draft workout." I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm "I had a couple of draft workouts I've, in, I've in nine years." I admired your game and your yeah. career. Um, it's thank a great you. example to a lot of people. Thank you. And, thank you. Uh, look forward to chatting with you uh, on Monday and then in Vancouver. Yeah, looking forward as well. Michael, just make sure the first question you ask Danny is not about Kawhi Leonard, and everything will be smooth from then on out. <laughs> Well, Kawhi yeah, should be there, uh, so yeah, ask I could understand why. Okay, take care. <laughs> Thanks, Take Mike. care, Michael. This is Danny Green, Inside the Green Room. Make sure to follow us on all social media. On Instagram, we are at Inside Green Room. On Twitter, we are Green Room Inside. 
Also, if you want to hear your questions answered in our mailbag, shoot us an email at insidedgreenroom at gmail.com. Once again, insidedgreenroom at gmail.com. That's green like the color with no E at the end. You never know. You just might want a gift from me or one of our guests. Until then, let's get back to the podcast. We're going to head outside in a moment. Before we do that, actually, just stand up. Uh, we want to give a special thank out, shout out to uh, Steel Auto Group uh, for helping us out. We got a nice little ride. Steel Auto Group, thank so you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, host often as well for housing us. We got a, and then you guys, what in the world? Danny just got in today. What in the world should Danny have to eat? I don't. Everybody says that. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first <laughs> everybody I gotta get a donair how was that <laughs> you'll find it. oh you haven't had one yet no it sounds like an airline I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm like what Don, Don Air I'm like, I'm flying Don Air well like, no go get a donair they text it to me so it's Don Air I'm like what the hell is Don Air like, is it an airline I'm like no go get a donair and eat it <laughs> yeah I'm like, all right Maybe we'll find out what that is. We're going to head over to Press Gang tonight and uh, enjoy a meal. They don't do that? They don't so have donuts. you got to get... Damn it. <laughs> All right, well... We got to get some picked up we or gotta, You got to get some, like, late night we'll grub. We'll late night grub up. or something like that. Yeah, we could do a late night uh, stop through. We'll <laughs> yeah. Eat. We'll read a donut to me. Once again, thank you guys for officially welcoming uh, Danny to Canada you guys. and thank to you. Halifax. Thank you to the Museum of... Uh, Canadian Museum of Immigration for having us here at Pier 21. It's been a lot of fun. Um, this podcast will be available to download tomorrow morning, and then you can follow us on social media at Inside Green Room on Instagram at Green Room Inside uh, on Twitter. And then Danny and I will be doing another podcast next week at Media Day. I don't know. Can I stay at your crib? I didn't get an Airbnb uh, yet. Yeah, I got some room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And then before we go, we're going to get a selfie. Camera. If you guys don't mind jumping in, and then after that, and then after that, we'll go outside. You Danny, need to stand up though. Wait, Danny will to... sign autographs, Actually, no, do pictures right outside. So if you want to, we'll get a couple. Of you got. Okay. We have to do half the room and half the room. So we gotta get. Wait, Danny, you're too tall. I gotta... Bro, now you're good. So we gotta get... we'll get ha- we'll get two halves. We should we get a video. Everybody. We gotta get we'll a video. Here. We'll do a video <laughs> selfie. <laughs> we got everybody. We got... Are we like making some we gotta noise? Get... Are we making we some noise? We gotta get people to stand. Halifax. Here we go. I think we got everybody. We're Halifax. That yeah, was with a video selfie. Cool. Yeah, that was that works. Co- uh, uh, yeah, that's good. Still shot or screenshots of whatever pictures you want to yeah. take from there. All right, so I'll let you control traffic from here. Special shout out to Title League as well for making this all happen as well. They deserve yeah. a round of applause. Huh? All right, please. That's it. All right, please. That's it. All right, please. That's it.